is um, going to speak to us today on how, to, how do traditional Māori values affect the sustainability of Māori tourism businesses. So, Kia ora koutou, i ngā mana, i ngā reo, i rau ranga tira mā, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, ko Adam Ransfield tōku ingoa, ko Taidui mi mātā tōa, ko Waka, ko Poroporo mi pūtau ki a Kimbaunga, ko Waikawa tāku awa, ko Ngāti Raukawa ki Otaki tōku iwi, ko Ngāti Wehiwehi tōku hapu. Uh, nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Thank you. <laughs> All right, kia ora. Um, I've been up since 3.30 this morning. I looked out, looked out my window, I can see Kapiti Island from where I live. And I was thinking, I just wish Air New Zealand was flying out of the Paraparumi airport. <laughs> I thought, why did you have to change it now? Um, but it doesn't matter. So I got in my car and cruised into Wellington, and here I am. Um, and it's beautiful to be here. Like, I just, yeah, the weather, a bit of rain, a bit of sun. Um, supposedly that's what Auckland's are like. And yeah, it's, it's a lot warmer than down home anyway. Um, so <clears throat> today I'm going to present to you uh, what I've been doing um, in my research, my master's thesis. Um, at Victoria University. Um, I'm a tourism lecturer uh, based in Wellington um, and really the idea for this study came about um, after living five years in Japan. Um, so I lived, lived in Japan, uh, my wife and I moved over to Japan and lived there for five years and what I realised after by the time I come home was I knew a hell of a lot about Japanese culture and, and Japanese language and it was almost at the detriment of, of who I am and, and, and my own kaupapa and my own knowledge of, of who I was. So when I came back to New Zealand, it was one of my goals um, to, to really um, to focus on, on Māori research and to focus on, uh, to focus on, focus on it from a, from a really from a tourism perspective and that's where my interests um, lie. So for me, this thesis was really, um, it's a journey. Ooh. It's a journey, <laughs> that's, oh yeah, cool. Yeah, it's really a journey um, that started, yeah? Anyway, that's the one. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so it's a journey that started a long time ago, um, and really now I'm sort of just living through that journey, so, so here I am. And at the moment, um, my research is really interested at looking at how, um, how values, how Māori values are incorporated into Māori tourism businesses and how and how that impacts their business sustainability. So really focusing on those three pillars of sustainability, um, the environmental pillar, social pillar and economic pillar. So I'm really lucky in my job because one of our kaupapa in terms of teaching our students is all about experiential learning and what that does is it gets us all over the country um, participating in all, as you can imagine, all the fun, the bungee jumping, the uh, whale watching, all of the fun tourism activities um, and, and getting to talk to all the different uh, business owners and providers all around the country and um, really get to know, get to know them at a, at a personal level. So for, for me it was really, well I haven't quite got to the interviewing stage which I'll cover in a minute, but um, when I get to that stage which is supposedly going to be in October, um, then I've got a whole heap of people that I can never talk to about this topic. And one thing from the trips around the country that we learn is that, you know, we were talking about collaboration in the um, in the crew this morning. And one thing that's quite um, that I, I see quite a lot in our job is it's all about, you know, it's all about giving to industry. You know, like going going to industry, knocking the door, asking for help. But also it's about, you know, giving help back. And that help could be in business. That help could be in research. That help could be in a whole heap of different um, areas. And and we're lucky enough to be able to have that at the moment, which has been quite, quite good for this study. So, yeah, coming back to the, the thesis, I'm really interested in looking at how values impact sustainability. Um, <clears throat> so from there, uh, there's three research questions that have been formed. The first one was all around which values are being uh, implemented in the management of uh, Māori tourism businesses. Then secondly, um, how are these values impacting on sustainability? And then finally, what does all this mean and how can it be beneficial to these Māori businesses but also other tourism uh, Māori businesses in, in New Zealand? And, and part of the framework or the methodology for this study is um, you know, being designed around some of Linda Smith's work and, and Kopapa framework and, and really like, you know, well, it, this is all good and it just like the speakers this morning but, you know, if it stops at a journal, then what's the point? So wh what can we do from it? What can people get from it? How can, how can we help you? Sort of thing. So that's sort of where we're going there. 
Um, <clears throat> now, in terms of mighty tourism, it's, it's, it's a really big, the industry itself, I mean, we're talking uh, three and a half million visitors plus last year, two million just to Queenstown, you know, we're talking $12 billion international spending, so we're talking really large amounts of money because we're special, you know, we are special. We have some amazing landscapes and I was lucky enough to drive through some today, um, but also we're special because there's one thing that we have that no one else has, and that's Māori culture. That's our, that's our selling point. That's who we are. That's what we have. And that's what people want to see. That's what our international visitors are coming here to see. Yes, they're coming to see the environment and those beautiful landscapes, but when we think about it, all of that stuff really is replicated around the world. You know, so one thing that sets us apart is, is who we are. So <clears throat> in terms of defining Māori tourism, there's a lot of definitions out there. And this took a bit of time really just to come to a, not really a conclusion, but a, a, give you a better picture. There's a lot of frameworks. Butler and Hinch is one that we talk a lot about in, in tourism literature. Um, it was um, oh, relatively old now, but focusing mainly on if it's Māori controlled and if it has a Māori theme, then it's a Māori business. Okay, well, or if it's Māori controlled, but it doesn't have a Māori theme, it's still a Māori business. Okay, but one of the factors that the literature was pointing towards when I was reading through it um, was the whole aspect of values and how values are a third way really of defining what a Māori tourism business is. So um, this crossed over really quite nicely with what the work that I'm doing um, in my thesis. <coughs> so. Again, just coming back to what is Māori tourism, so it's around control or management, all right? Control and management of the business. Um, when I was looking also at a lot of the work, it talked about, um, you, know, um, you know, some businesses may not be Māori owned but have Māori staff, so they class as Māori, but would they be a Māori tourism business? So there's a lot of different factors to consider. Um, but my argument would be, if you have Māori staff, you know, Values are embedded in you through Papa, through you know, th through who you are. So ultimately, there will be some, some impact there. Okay, it's not tested yet, but that's the way the literature is going. Um, around obligations, so one of the key things again that sets mighty tourism businesses apart from other businesses is the obligation, not just to your own financial success, but to the financial success or to the success of everyone else um, in your area, your your people. Not about just about me, it's about how we are going to do it, which I thought was quite interesting. And um, there's only a couple of studies that I've been able to find that have focused on um, the impacts of values on Māori tourism businesses. And both of those studies found that um, they both found that profit was important um, in terms of breaking even was really important, but it wasn't the major factor in terms of how they viewed success, for the, the business owners view success, which again is a sort of a different mentality to um, what, what Western society says it should be, I guess. Um, and then finally to having obligations to extended family, so you know like things through scholarships which I'll talk about as well, some of the different ways in, uh, in which these businesses are, um, are helping their family members um, you know, achieve self self development, achieve success. Um, so coming back, as um, it was mentioned this morning, fifty billion dollars Maori economy. Obviously, not all of that is devoted or contributed by tourism. Probably only a small percentage of that is, but it is a percentage that's increasing. Um, and again, culture is what what we have. It's our selling point. Um, it's what makes us different. It's what people want to see. But they want to see authentic, uh, authentic experiences. So the trip to, to Whakarewarewa and to Pui is still very important because it gives, uh, it gives visitors an insight into, into performance and, and culture. But a lot of our visitors are really interested in getting some unique experiences. Like um, I was talking to John Barrett, who's a, um, he's a owner of uh, Kapiti Nature Tours, and he takes people over to Kapiti Island. And he talks a lot about a lot of the visitors are really interested in hearing the stories. So, yes, they're interested in, in, in the culture a lot, but they're really interested in the stories, and, and they tell their message through the stories of Toro Paraha and, and, and the eerie and the money, and all of the really interesting stories, all the, all the ideas that come, which, which I think is quite, quite good, and that's what the research says is happening as well. Um, and again, tourism 
is one of our leading ex well, it is our leading. It's our number one export earner at the moment. I think it's just overtaken farming, which is quite good because my wife works for beef and lamb. So, <laughs> so she's in that primary industry. I'm in the tourism industry, so we often have quite good discussions about it. Um, but I'm, I'm happy when we're in the lead, which is quite good. Um, in terms of the nature of the businesses, they're all relatively small. Well, the, the industry itself, in terms of um, Tourism New Zealand, really is quite small. So we're talking um, small and medium-sized enterprises, very seasonal-based, um, uh, which is the nature of our industry. So in tourism, obviously, you've got your really peak times. You've got your big uh, November, December, January, February and then you've got your big winter seasons, but everything in between is what we call a shoulder season, and it's not really as, um, it's, it's about how can we make those times just as busy, or how can we mitigate some of those risks associated with it, which is quite good. Um, a lot of the businesses are associated with experiences, activities, um, and then, you know, you've got, but you still have your big players, like your, um, you've got Naitahu, who, Naitahu Tourism, who have a huge range of different businesses. Most are actually, Māori owned but not really Māori themed, so they own Shot Over Jet, um, which a lot of people don't realise, and I didn't actually at first either, down in Queenstown, and if you go on Shot Over Jet now, I mean I've done it a couple of times again, lucky enough to be able to go with my students, but now um, in the experience they do incorporate a bit of myth and legend in the area through the guide, which is something that's quite a new inclusion that wasn't there before, but in a subtle way, which I think is quite, just quite interesting how they, how they do that. And then, um, obviously, you've got places like Kaikoura Whale Watch, and um, again, we're lucky enough to, to get uh, Tautoko there from Kawahi Ngāpura, who's the CEO down there um, at, at Whale Watch, and he's such an interesting man to hear talk. Um, I really you know, admire the work that he's done and look up to him, you know, especially after the earthquake down there. He talked, he talked about how Whale Watch uh, staff, because they couldn't uh, send the vessels out because of the earthquake and the damage, and how he said that a lot of the a lot of the staff he just dis, uh, commissioned in different areas of the community um, to help on things like uh, with roadworks, but at least made it so that everyone still had a job. You know, little things like that. You know, things that uh, really typify what a Māori business is. You know, not just thinking about and you know multi-million dollar business. He probably didn't have to do that, but it's there's more there's more than the bottom line. You know. And, and, and again, he's really good in the, in the sense that he's really help, helpful and, and talks to our students whenever we go down there and, and, and makes a point to let them know how they started and where they are now and, and the challenges that they faced in between. Yeah, so. Um, so, so that's the first part of the thesis. It's all about um, Māori tourism. Then the next part comes into values, and, and again for me this was a really a journey, you know, a journey that I'm still learning, and I think I always will learn if I'm not too sure of anything. I, I've got people that I can talk to. Nana, Koro, what does this mean? <laughs> what do you mean by that? And they're really quite helpful, and, and you know, giving me giving me ideas and understanding. Um, but I, for me, that quote at the top was, and I won't read it because you can see it, but uh, really quite powerful, and, and really it is true, you know, it really does hold true. Um, the way they describe culture and, and, and values and how you know how values form from culture, how um, Māori values develop from Batoranga Māori. I mean things you know the different aspects are you know just quite interesting to see and, and it, obviously going to be embedded in everything that you do. Um, you know it, it, you can't escape it as it said at the top. It's in, it penetrated in the roots of your nervous system. It's quite interesting. Um, so in terms of the, the literature, so what it was telling me was there were certain, I mean there are a whole heap of body values that were being referred to in, in some of the studies that I read, but there were um, a core five or six that were quite common, and those uh, five or six values I'll discuss in a minute, but they help frame the uh, conceptual framework that's guiding the research. Um, so I'll talk about that in a second as well. Uh, again, coming back to um, the whole holistic view of business, considering the well-being of, uh, of others, not just the bottom line, which keeps coming up and coming up and coming up, and, and it contradicts a lot of what, as I said before, it contradicts a lot of what um, we're told a business should do, but there are businesses out there that are balancing that, all these three social, uh, these, these three pillars of sustainability quite well. Um, and then, 
I'll leave that there. All right. Um, and then finally, sort of where we come to is, um, okay, cool. So now we know what a Māori tourism business is. We know what Māori values are. But what does it mean and how do they impact on sustainability? Uh, and this is really the, the, the key of the study. So what I'm planning on doing is um, heading around New Zealand. I've got um, eight people at the moment who I'm going to interview. And the focus of the interview is all about you know, how they use uh, traditional Māori values in their business because literature says that different businesses do but very much at an operational focus rather than a strategic focus so it'll be quite interesting to see if that comes out of the, um, the um, study as well. Um, but the big pull here was obviously around the 80s and 90s and sustainability, the big catchphrase, you know, trying to, thank you, trying to um, you know, make sure that everything is being balanced. For Māori and for tourism in particular, you know, going back a little bit now, and I failed to mention this before, but um, you know, as Brooke said in his speech, Māori have always been in business. It's nothing new. Um, but the, night, the, the economic reforms of the 90s really had a big impact on Māori, firstly quite negatively, but then for a lot of, for tourism, it was kind of almost one of the best things that could have happened because from that grew all of this interest in New Zealand. People, it opened, all, it opened up and, and people realised what we had. Um, Whale Watch was formed around that time. You know, you probably heard the story, 90% unemployment. And I can't believe every time I hear it, 90% of people, 90% of Māori and Kaikoura in 1995, I think, um, or 1990, were unemployed. All right? So the, the, we were talking about it over lunch, Nick. You know, you've got people, biz, uh, business body, um, families coming together, mortgaging their housing cars, and, and building Whale Watch. And the reason why they built Whale Watch is that people came down and they noticed that people were interested in the whales, and now look at it now. So it's, it's just quite interesting to, to see that in operation. Um, and I know, because I know a bit about that business, that there is going to be a lot of examples there of how they incorporate um, values into their practice. It kind of aligns really nicely with the triple bottom line, which we've heard about this morning. Um, and for my study, I've considered literature from the triple bottom line as well, because it, it is pretty much looking at the same thing. You've also got corporate social responsibility, which is another area, three big areas of literature, but I've tended to just focus on uh, business sustainability and the triple bottom line. All right, um, so just, just very briefly now, because I know I don't have much time left, um, and I'm feeling quite tired actually after waking up at 3.30 a.m. <laughs> but um, what I've found so far is that these are the areas that are being affected. So in terms of the social pillar, um, a lot of the literature is saying that uh, a lot of Māori businesses are um, looking at creating employment for people, awarding scholarships, um, the focusing on and teaching and upskilling start of people, that ancestral connection to shareholders, it's really beautiful, you know. When I show my dad, he goes, that's beautiful, boy. And it is, because it's really, it's not common, you know, it's not common everywhere. Um, in terms of the environment, at the moment, again, um, this particular author, so one, he's one of the two that I managed to find that focus on the same, relatively the same topic, uh, show that Māori businesses also place a focus on health of physical, spiritual, people, animal, land, you know. There's so much talk at the moment about, um, you know, uh, environmental degradation, and, and, and I've heard so many stories about how, and, and we all probably know stories about how actually a lot of Māori know the answer to a lot of these problems, but no one's listening, you know. The answers are there, but maybe people don't want to listen. I don't know. I don't, I don't know enough about it yet, but hopefully soon I will. And then coming again back to the economic pillar, and, and, and so far, just the focus on if you're looking after your people and you're successful, ultimately uh, profits will come. So, so you know, it'd be quite interesting to see if that, that continues through the literature. So, last thing, this is what I've been working on the last couple of months, is trying to turn all of that into a picture. And I really like pictures because pictures help me kind of understand things. So this is my framework. Um, you should be able to understand it without me saying anything, but I'll say something just in case because it is kind of hard to understand. But basically, in this um, ball here, you've got uh, some Māori values on the outside, and these are the values that have come up quite a lot in the literature. So 
uh, wairua tanga, kotahi tanga, kaitiaki tanga, tino ranga, tira tanga, manaki tanga, and whanaunga tanga. So I'm not, I'm, if, if other values come up during the interview process, they'll definitely be um, you know, considered as well, but these are the ones that have been the, the biggest um, from, from the literature. The box in the middle and the different shades of grey, um, my wife always laughs at that, but that's how I remember it. So this is all about how values impact the business, but at differing levels. So some values are, in some businesses are heavily uh, impacted, where some are not so much, so there is varying degrees. Um, this little line going into, your, um, into the business sustainability says that some of these Māori values align really closely, and that's the thing. You know, one thing that the literature shows is that values, Māori values align very well with sustainability anyway. You know, so the answers are there. It's just about diving a bit deeper and finding them. Um, and then the bigger line just indicates that um, values, imp oh shoot. values impact business. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> Sorry, values uh, impact business and that has an impact on the sustainability. So that's sort of what the, the framework is saying at the moment. Um, so that's sort of what I've been doing. And then finally around the methods, just um, quickly, for me, Nothing is black and white. I've always sort of been, it's been the way it's always been for me, so I really live my life in the grey. Um, so, um, <laughs> intersubjective, you know, look, viewing research from the inside out rather than from the outside in is how I'll be framing myself in the study. And it's inevitable because I know a lot of the people that I'll probably be interviewing as well, which obviously has its implications, but I don't care. <laughs> That's what I want to do. Um, and, and again, frame, framing it from that kaupapa uh, framework and thinking about, you know, that book by Linda, I know, you know, it's uh, Decolonising Methodologies. I mean, everyone's probably read it, and it's so good, and I, I have it at home, and I often refer back, but when I read that, and when I met Linda uh, just recently at the World Indigenous Tourism Summit um, in Hamilton, I, the way she writes is so strong and powerful, and when I met her, I, ex I don't know what I expected, but I think I expected someone really big and strong. But it doesn't matter because she is really, really strong with her words and her knowledge and, and just, you know, just being a really good guide. Just helping me understand how to, you know, how to talk to, to, to people, how to incorporate um, culture within the interview process, how to mitigate risk, all of that stuff. So that's my journey. Um, I have to be finished by July next year. <laughs> so I'm well in the role. I've got an interview in October. Um, and transcribe, hopefully we'll get one of my students to do that as part of my Kaupapa framework. <laughs> for, for a fee, hopefully, but you know, she, she's a Māori student who's interested in the topic, so I thought, well, it kind of aligns really nicely with the, with the framework anyway. You know, and it's cheaper. Yeah, and it's, and, it's, and it's around Christmas time, you know. And it's around Christmas time. Everyone needs money at Christmas time. Yeah, but, but that's where I am, so. Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah. Thanks very much, it's really, really useful. That's all right, no, and no. And also, arigato gozaimasu. Arigato. Japanese days. But, uh, bro, <laughs> to, to say that, um, uh, as part of your research, will you be looking at or collecting or having you covered stories of conflict between Hapu or between Whanau in terms of their Kaitiaki responsibility to certain Tanga and you know, do the good of the challenges or not, or shared or not? Have you covered any of those conflict stories and will that be coming out in your thesis as to how people are encountering the role? No doubt it will, and I haven't yet. But the thing about it, Nick, is sort of I'm because it's a it's a really difficult place to frame it. So do I frame it at, um, like, do I frame it at interviewing iwi representatives, or do I frame it at um, interviewing body tourism businesses? Because some of both. But that, that's sort of one of the things I'm thinking about at the moment. Because I think depending on who I interview, will depend on a lot of the stuff that you know that's that sort of those issues that maybe, that maybe come up during the interviews. Um, but I'm sure it will, and I hope it does to some extent, because you know, I want to try and find as much out as I can and be able to put it out there to help. You know, mm. I don't care if I get a publication. I, don't, I mean, it would be nice if Ashok's in the room, I think. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 like I teach on a diploma and certificate, so I don't have allocated research time. This is just like an extension of my job. I enjoy doing it. And if it comes to be a publication, that's great. But the key focus is, is getting something that I can put in industry format 
take it around to the to business owners and other business owners that we deal with as part of our field trips and um, and meetings that we have and, and show well this is what I found what can you do from this what can you take from this and how can this help you you know that, that, that's part of the giving back process mm. yeah. Yeah. thanks heaps and I think also like while the primary purpose will be for Māori and Aotearoa there are many indigenous communities all around the world who we work with who would love to learn from the stuff that yeah. you that you find here so yeah kia ora thank kia ora. you Adam, that was an excellent talk, um, and uh, really wish you all the best with that with that journey that you're on. And I was just reflecting on uh, some of the things that were said by Linda this morning with respect to uh, ways of teaching Te Reo and her reference to service, and um, then thinking about this, which is very much tikanga and um, you know values that are. Uh, are being relearned over and over by Māori. You know, there's a scent, there's a there's a funny sort of propensity for Pākehā to think, oh, just because someone's Māori knows that they means they know everything about being Māori, and uh, and we we know the historical reasons for that. But and I'm just reflecting on how 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 you know this how important this is and how f but how formative it is in terms of you know creating a toolkit or or you you know you talk quite a few times about wanting what you end up with to be useful, <clears throat> not just a tome on a shelf, you know, and for these stories to be shared. It's really exciting. I don't really have a question, but I just, mm. I just feel an excitement about the work that you're doing and the value that that can bring, you know, to the, to the ways that we share our country and particularly, obviously, in your case, the way that your people share your country, you know. I think it's really, really great. So I don't really have a question. Yeah, kia ora. <laughs> oh, kia ora. Thank you for that. That was an um, excellent presentation. Um, I don't have a question. I have a comment. So I've been working with a Korean group in Northland, and they run meditation tours, and they bring um, <clears throat> people from America, um, China, Japan, Korea over and what that is doing actually is bringing millions of dollars into oh. um, Northland in that shoulder period because you know they come over this time of year when there's um, it's summer in those countries, some of them. Um, yeah, so that's that's um, being really. I mean, they're not all Maori business who are benefiting, but there are some, especially in the Hokianga and around there. So that's certainly one way to um, diversify. Right. I think is to try and tap into those international markets. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. It, it, I mean, I think it's a problem that the industry has always faced, but there are solutions around it. You know, there are, and it doesn't have to be all through sales promotion and cutting costs either. I think, mm. you know, I think the big thing for, for New Zealand tourism at the moment is quality rather than quantity. And if we can get the right people to come here and spend all their money, <coughs> then having someone come here for a longer period of time and maybe spending the same amount of money as someone does maybe in a, you know, in a week, mm. you know, it, it's sort of that balance. Yeah. And, and then, that, uh, then that cuts back to the, industry, uh, the impacts that are associated with those types of travellers as well. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 everything looks pretty good. People have always travelled, people will always travel. It's, it's, we have to, you know, like if I said, you know, here's $5,000 or $10,000, you know, Go and buy yourself a new car, or go go on a holiday. You know, some people will take a car because the car you have, you can jump in it, you can ride in it. You know, you can it's your car, you can clean it, you can talk to it, you can sing in it, you can do whatever you want. The holiday, you go, but all you bring back is memories. But when you're 90 years old, when you're sitting in that rocking chair, it's those memories that you're probably going to remember, hey, probably, yeah. unless it's a really nice car. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Tourism Industry Association. Yep. 
Aotearoa. So this is their sustainability framework. I'm wondering if you are connected in Wellington with them where this could feed into that because yeah. I attended a recent conference where they released it and I was like, they're not meeting any obligations to the tangata whenua. Mm. So they need something like this. So once it's formalised, yeah. this would be mm -hmm. really powerful yeah. um, to push into that framework. We, we're quite lucky in that respect because Jamie Smiler, who's yeah. one of my colleagues, he, he writes the State of the Nation for, for TIA, Tourism Industry Aotearoa. So, yeah. So yeah, I'm hoping I know. this I will just be wanna, reflected. I just want to just have to get it done. To get yeah. It done. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. Three kids under seven, four, and one. It's and a wife. Wow. You know, he's like, get it done. <laughs> I need you to look after the kids. It'll happen. It'll get there. Yeah. Thank you very much. Kia ora. 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 Kia 